Now let us proceed with the discussions of the terminology used in the contract. In this video, we are going to discuss about the certificate. This certificate is not the certificate that you obtain from the bachelor degree or any certificate or participations. Although the terms is the same, it is referring to the written notice issued by the architect to express his judgment under circumstances where the contract specifically empower him to do so. In short, this certificate is issued by the architect and it is issued wholly in accordance to the terms and conditions of the contract. We have quite a number of the certificate their conditions can be referred from different clauses. We shall look into them one by one. First, the Certificate of Practical Completions. This can be found in Clause 15.2 in PEN contract. It is issued when the works are practically completed. The meaning of practical completions is referring to the point which a building project is completed. There could be minor defects which can easily be rectified without undue interference or disturbance to the occupant. In another word, the practical completions means the completions of the project. The outcome of the project can be handed over to the employer with all the necessary functionality. Although minor defects is allowed, this defect should not be significant and can easily be rectified. The architect will need to issue the Certificate of Practical Completions within 14 days after the written notice of completions by the contractor. It means that once the contractor has completed the work, the contractor will have to write a notice to the architect, notify the architect that the work has been completed. Then the architect will have to inspect and check whether the building has already been properly completed. Within 14 days, if the building has been completed, the architect will issue the certificate of practical completions. Next is the Certificate of Making Good Defects. This can be seen from Clause 15.6. You know that after the structures has been practically completed, there will be a period known as the Defect Liability Period, which normally in the range of 12 months. And within this Defect Liability Period, any defects found upon request will need to be rectified by the contractor, which theoretically, if the work is properly done, there shouldn't be any defect. There will be a liability period for the employer to claim for the rectifications. Now that a defect is found and the employer requests for the rectifications, and it falls within the defect liability period, the contractor will be asked to make good of the defect. That means to rectify it. Once the contractors have rectified the defect, the contractor will need to send a written notice to the architect, notify that he has made good of the defect, and the architect will have to check on the defect. Once certified the defect, has been rectified and it is in good conditions. Within 14 days after the written notice by the contractor, the Certificate of Making Good Defect is issued. That means the issue related to the defect has been closed. Next, we talk about the Certificate of Partial Completion. This is found in Clause 16.1. This is normally issued before the Certificate of Practical Completion, depending on the situations. Sometimes, 
there is no certificate of partial completion straight away to the certificate of practical completion. This is normally necessary when the employer is taking possessions of certain part of the work before the practical completions with the consent of the contractor. That means the project has not entirely completed, it is only partially completed and the employer is eager to quickly take possessions of whichever that has been completed and the part being possessed by the employer will be issued with the practicals or partial completions. This is of course with the consent of the contractor provided that it costs no interference to the work of the contractors for the remaining part. Therefore, in the case that the employer possess the building or the structure after the whole project is completed, the certificate of partial completion is not required and the employer can possess the entire project after the certificate of practical completion. However, if the employer wish to possess part of the work, the employer will have to wait for the certificate of partial completions. And that particular completed part of the work will be handed over to the employer. From then, the defect liability period starts for that particular section. So, this certificate of partial completions will need to be issued by the architect within 14 days of the dates of the employer perceptions. Theoretically, without the certificate of completions, the employer cannot occupy the building. Next is the certificate of sectional completions. This can be found in clause 21.3. This is applicable when the project is separated into various sections and that particular section has been practically completed. Then this certificate of sectional completions is issued. This one is slightly different than the certificate of partial completion. Because this partial completion is referring to the part that has already been completed but there will be remaining part of the work. For example, we are talking about the two blocks of building. One of the building has already been completed, but the project considered as a whole by two buildings, and the employers are quite eager to possess the first completed building. Then this certificate of partial completions will be issued. However, in the context of the certificates of sectional completions, the two building is considered two sections from the start during the establishment of the contract document. And each section will have the specific date of completion. That means each section has their clear-cut definitions on their work and the scope. So when a section is completed, the certificate of sectional completions will be issued. Next one, it will be the certificate of non-completion. This can be found in clause 22.1. It is issued when the contractor fails to complete the work by the completion date. You know that in the contract, the completion dates are being specified. The contractor need to complete the work and hand over to the employer as per the completion date. Exceeding these completion dates, that means the contractor fail to fulfill his obligations in delivering the work within the stipulated time. As a result, the certificate of non-completions will be issued. Normally, the contractor do not like this to happen as this can incur penalty which is also stated within the contract document. Next, we talk about the certificate of extensions of time. The extension of time is also known as the EOT in short form. 
This can be found in clause 23.4. This EOT happens when the contractor is unable to complete the work on time and there is a good reason for the delay, which is approved or accepted by the employer. Back to the certificate of non-completion just now. When the contractor fails to complete the work by the completion date, the contractor may apply for the extension of time. The contractor will need to give justifications for the request of the extension of time. Otherwise, penalty will be incurred. Then the architect will need to determine whether the request of EOT is valid and also seek consent from the employer. If the request is unvalid, the certificate of extensions of time will not be issued. That means the contractor is non-compliance to the completion date. However, if the EOT is approved for some valid reasons, this certificate of extension of time will be issued within six weeks of the applications. And normally these applications of EOT will need to be done by the contractor earlier before the completion date. When the contractor foresee that there will be an extension of time due to some unforeseen circumstances, which is not due to the responsibility of the contractor. We're going to discuss about this EOT in detail later in this module regarding what are the reasons that can be considered for the EOT. As far as you know now, this certificate of extension of time normally come after the certificate of non-completions and after the contractor has sent in the applications to seek approval for the EOT and this EOT will need to be evaluated whether it is justified and in the case that the EOT is granted the certificate of extension of time will be issued next we look at the penultimate certificate this can be seen from the clause 30.13 13. It is issued upon the release of the retention sum and the outstanding sum to the nominated subcontractor or the nominated supplier. You know that whichever progress of the project, they will be claimed by the subcontractor or the supplier. The NSC are entitled for the work that has been done while the NS nominated supplier are entitled to claim for the material that they have supplied. In the progress claim, a certain amount of money will be retained just in case that there are defects in terms of the work or the material supply and this retained sum will encourage them to make good of those defects for them to fully retrieve the retained sum. In the case that they are reluctant to rectify those, this retained sum will be used to rectify those defects. So this penultimate certificate is related to this retained sum or the outstanding sum paid to the nominated subcontractor and the nominated supplier. It is when the NSC or NS has made good of those defects and within 14 days after the issuance of the certificate of making good defect this retained sum and the outstanding sum are to be released and therefore the penultimate certificate is issued next we talk about the final certificate this can be found in clause 30.14 and 13.15 this final certificate is related to the final account. The final account is the document showing the adjustments of the contract sum after the completion of the work. By then, all the provisional sum and uncertain quantities has already been confirmed. 
This final account will need to be completed within 6 months after the practical completions of the work. That means within half a year that the project has been completed, the final account will need to be confirmed. So in this final certificate, it will state the final account minus the total sum certified in the previous payment certificate. That means whichever has already been claimed is claimed and the remaining will be paid to the contractor. And it is issued within 28 days after the period of honouring certificates for the payments of the penultimate certificate. It should also be issued within 28 days after the certificate of making goods defect if the penultimate certificate is not being issued. The meaning of this period of honouring certificate is the period that the contractor is entitled for payment from the submissions of the claim to the employer. That means that will be the durations that the payment should be made to the contractor. This period is typically 21 days. That's why the duration here is set to be 21 days. At the end of the day, this final certificate is related to the claim of the remaining sum after the completions of the work, which is in accordance to the final account that's supposed to be completed within 6 months after the completions of the work. Next, there will be entering certificate. This can be found in clause 30.1 and it is related to the progress payment certificate issued by the architect. The contractor may claim for the work that has been done from time to time. The completed work later will be checked by the architect or the quantity surveyor. Once the amount of work being done is confirmed, the interim certificate will be issued and the contractor is entitled to claim for the work being done. This interim certificate will need to be issued within 21 days from the receipt of the contractor's claim applications. That means once the work is done by the contractor, the contractor may submit claim and within 21 days, the architect or the quantity surveyor will need to confirm the amount of work and the architect will issue the interim certificate. What we see here, there is quite a number of certificates being issued by the architect. There are three certificates related to the completions. Practical completions for the entire project. Partial completions for the parts which has been completed and being processed by the employer. The sectional completions will be the practical completions of a section as defined in the contract document. In the case that the contractor is unsuccessful to complete the project within the stipulated time, certificate of non-completions will be issued. The contractor may choose to apply for the extension of time if the EOT is approved there will be certificate of extensions of time. For the project that has already completed and handed over to the employer, there will be a period of defect liability. In the case that any defects arise, the contractor will have to rectify those defects without any charges. Then only when the defects are being rectified, the Certificate of Making Good Defects will be issued. The certificate related to the payment include the penultimate certificate, final certificate and interim certificate. Penultimate certificate is related to the release of retention sum or outstanding sum to the nominated subcontractor and nominated supplier. This retention sum will be released 
after the certificate of making good defects. That means it is totally after the defect liability of the NSC and NS. The interim certificate is related to the progress payment after the applications of the claim by the contractor. And lastly, the final certificate is related to the final account. The balance which has not been paid to the contractor after the completions of the work.